Cash for Sizing by Drew Eric Whitman is one of the best, if not the best, book ever written on the subject of advertising copywriting. And I promise that if you learn the concepts I'm about to cover in this video, you will be a better marketer. This book has taught me more about marketing than anything or anyone else. So I've done my best to summarize some of the key takeaways of this amazing book in hopes it helps you too. Unfortunately, I can't cover everything Drew teaches in this short video, so please do yourself a favor and grab a copy of the book, but more on that later. Now, with that being said, here are some of the main concepts from Drew Eric Whitman's book titled Cash Hurtizing, How to Use More Than 100 Secrets of Ad Agency Psychology to Make Big Money Selling Anything to Anyone. Most people don't know a thing about advertising and what makes people buy advertisers as drew says try to be cutesy and clever as you may have guessed by now that is not how to make people buy from you it's so bad that drew goes on to use a quote from the late great david ogilvy he says 99 percent of advertising doesn't sell much of anything to anyone so then how do you sell your product or service to people how do you persuade them it really isn't that hard if you know human psychology and how the human mind works according to some deductive logic drew illustrates Advertising is a subset of communication, sales is a subset of advertising, persuasion is a subset of sales, psychology is a subset of persuasion, and psychology is the study of the human mind. Therefore, one can deduct that if you know how the human mind works, then you know how to advertise. So, this book teaches you how to advertise by teaching you about how the human mind works. The most important point that Drew communicates in the whole book is that the human mind has eight main desires, which he calls to life force eight or LF8 for short. If you advertise to any of these eight biological desires, then people will desire your product or service and they will buy, buy, buy. After these eight biologically programmed desires, there are nine, quote, secondary desires or wants that he, all humans have. Hold on. And this is really valuable stuff here. So before we go into detail and list the LF8, the nine secondary desires and Drew's other great tips, Let's cover these two important marketing fundamentals so you can better apply and understand how to properly use what Drew teaches. Drew teaches these two marketing fundamentals later on in his book, but I feel like it's best if you understand them first before we go through the LFA and the nine secondary desires. Marketing fundamental number one, ADA, A-I-D-A. You probably heard of the acronym ADA or A-I-D-A, which stands for Attention, Interest, Desire, and Action. Well, Drew didn't create the framework, but he agrees it's a very useful guide to making sure your advertising is persuasive and effective. Attention! None of your advertising matters if you don't first have their attention and interest. This is obvious, but you might be surprised on how many people miss the importance of getting and holding someone's interest. You might have the best ad ever created, but no one will buy your product if you can't capture and keep their attention long enough to read or watch or listen to your ad. Desire. You must make your prospect, aka future customer, desire what you are selling. If desire is strong enough, they will take action, but it really helps to get them to act on their new desire right away because there's a very small, next to nothing, infinitesimal chance they will take the time to buy your product at a later time. So, and this is very important, ask them to take action now. Or use marketing tricks like a deadline, limited supply, FOMO, coupons that expire in the near future, etc. to encourage immediate action. Even saying there's a limited supply for a limited time is better than nothing if you don't have a hard deadline. Alright, marketing fundamental number two. Mind movies. To effectively create a desire within a person, Drew highly recommends the use of vivid imagery so they create what he calls a quote, movie in their head. This does two main things. It increases their desire by painting a more vivid picture, and secondly, it helps them visualize actually using your product or service. Here's an example. Which would you rather buy? Example A, blank sells pizza, 1-800-555-5555-999-123-1. Mozzarella Road, www.bigcheesedist.com. Or, example B, Polly's Pizza, 
At Polly's Pizza, we hand shred our mozzarella every morning. Our competitors offer you a choice of thin crust and crispy or deep dish Sicilian, but they don't tell you that they buy their dough in hard frozen balls and thawed out the night before. At Polly's Pizza, we make our dough fresh every single day. Our competitors tell you how convenient their home delivery service is, but they don't tell you that their average delivery time is over an hour. Polly's Pizza delivers in 28 minutes or your pizza is free. Call Polly's Pizza now, 1-800-555-555. 55555 or order at pollyspizza.com. In example B, you start to imagine the fresh dough and the quality service. So obviously you're going to choose that over the competitors. Again, the other big reason that this helps your customer desire your product over the alternative is that they can imagine themselves using, or in this case, eating your product as they've read the description. Again, this is a key part of the buying process for every customer. They must be able to see themselves using your product because if they can't, they won't. Also, importantly, the more vivid picture or movies in your customer's imagination, the more persuasive they are. Here's more examples to further illustrate how this works. You could say, go somewhere and do something. This is a blank movie screen, no imagery. Go somewhere and get something. Do can mean anything. Get is a little more specific. Go to the kitchen and get something. Still vague, but now you know where to go. Go to the kitchen and get food. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. Do you see how filling in the details creates imagery? Go to the kitchen, open the oven, and get food. Now, notice you picture yourself opening an oven. Specific wording implants images. Action words create moving pictures. Go to the kitchen, open the oven, and pull out the pizza. Very visual. A picture of a pizza pops in your head. Go to the kitchen, open the oven, and pull out the freshest, crispiest, most delicious hot pizza you've ever eaten. Go on, cut yourself a big hearty slice. Careful, it's hot. Now, take a big bite. Talk about crispy. The dough was made fresh this morning and baked in an extra virgin olive oil coated cast iron pan for a thick, deep dish Chicago style crust. The sauce? Prepared from scratch, of course, from juicy plum tomatoes picked this morning and blended with select herbs from our very own garden. Cheese? You betcha. Lots and lots of chewy cheese. Whole milk mozzarella made from the finest buffalo milk. Of course, the entire pie packed to a bubbling perfection in a 750-degree wood-burning brick oven from Genoa, Italy. Okay, okay. Hopefully this illustrates the value of using words that create vivid imagery or movies in your prospect's head. This example also does a good job on how to dispel the marketing myth that you may have heard, short copy beats long copy. Well, Drew and all the marketing greats say the opposite. In fact, long copy beats short copy as long as it's not boring copy. So here's a good quote from marketing legend David Ogilvie. The more you tell, the more you sell. Drew thinks that short copy myth got spread because people's attention spans are shorter than the goldfish's. But the truth is that a lot of people need long copy to build up enough desire to buy your product. Don't be afraid to keep the copy flowing. To further dispel the myth, let's use some common sense. If a person with a short attention span can easily read the headline and then buy, they don't have to read everything if they don't want to. Therefore, with long copy, you can sell to the person with a short attention span, as well as the person who needs you to create a longer and more specific mental movie in their mind, in turn, increasing their desire and convincing them to buy. Okay, with these fundamental marketing concepts covered, you're now ready to learn exactly how the human mind works, what people desire, and some other great trade secrets that Drew reveals throughout cash advertising. Drew's main lesson, the Life Force 8, or LF8 for short. Human beings are biologically programmed with the following eight desires. Number one, survival, enjoyment of life and life extension. Number two, enjoyment of food and beverages. Number three, freedom from fear, pain, and danger. Number four, sexual companionship. Number five, comfortable living conditions. Number six, to be superior, winning, keeping up with the Joneses. Seven care and protection of loved ones and eight social approval okay so you're probably wondering great what do i do with this newfound knowledge it's simple just tell your customers how your product or service meets one or as many of these desires as possible the more benefits that you can show your product satisfies these desires the better alternatively people are motivated by loss even more than they are gain 
So you may also show how if they don't get your product, they'll be missing out on ways to satisfy these eight desires. Here's some examples Drew uses to showcase how effective the LF8 are. In his example, mail order guru Haldeman Julius sold 200 million books, nearly 2,000 different titles. They only cost five cents each. To advertise his books, he placed ads consisting only of the book's titles. If the book didn't sell, he changed the ad copy, but not the way you'd expect. He actually changed the titles of the books. Then he'd sit back and study the response. How clever. Look what happened when he changed the titles based on the LF8 desires. Old title, 10 o'clock, 2000. New title, what art should mean to you? 9000. That's the LF8. As you can see, other examples. Sex and self-improvement were the most effective of the LF8. I guess you were right when they coined the phrase sex sells. I can personally attest to how effective the LF8 are as I was able to increase our company's entire revenue by 36% in a single A-B split test by applying all six of the LF8 benefits our product supplied which applied to our customers front and center on the homepage of our website. I was stunned by the effectiveness of the LF8 and I will use it in all of my future marketing. In fact, it's the main reason I'm making this video and sharing it with you so you can improve all of your future marketing efforts. Drew is spot on with the LF8 and if you take nothing else away from this video and Drew's book, please take the LF8 and use them. Another main point of Drew's, people buy because of emotion and they justify with logic. That's why these are so effective because they force an emotional response by touching on a basic want or need. Okay, now the nine learned secondary human wants. Number nine, to be informed. Number 10, curiosity. Number 11, cleanliness. Number 12, efficiency. 13, convenience. 14, dependability, quality. Number 15, expression of beauty and style. 16, economy and profit. 17, bargains. These secondary wants don't come close to the LFA, but they're strong enough to create and increase the desire of your product in your prospect's eyes. So use them. In fact, I recommend you take a screenshot now and write your marketing copy to address as many of these human desires as possible in everything you produce. Or for a complete list, which you can easily access, I've got a link in the description below to my blog page with the LFA and nine secondary desires listed for quick reference or for a PDF download. Of course, I can't cover all of the gold that's in this amazing book, but before I conclude the video, I just want to quickly show you the extensive table of contents and other secrets of ad agency psychology that Drew explains and hopes it persuades you to get a copy of the book yourself. As you can see, here it is. In my blog, I'll elaborate much more on many of these concepts, but to highlight a few here, I encourage you to pay special attention and learn more about these top five marketing tips and tricks that I think are most powerful. Number one, the psychology of simplicity, K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple, stupid. Don't talk over people's heads, just write at a seventh grade reading level. Number two, the psychology of pricing. Everything's relative, so your product's price relative to something expensive makes your product seem less expensive. Quick analogy, if you push a refrigerator and then push a chair, the chair feels extremely light. But if you push the chair first and then go to push the refrigerator, the refrigerator seems extremely heavy. So it's perspective here. And that's a little pricing psychology where they see a bigger price next to a smaller price. It makes the smaller price seem like a lot better deal. Number three, the six weapons of influence, shortcuts to persuasion by Robert Cialdini. Drew takes the six weapons of influence and teaches them in his book and they're golden. So I also highly recommend Robert Cialdini's book. But those six are, the, the six he say are the fundamentals of influence are reciprocity, scarcity, authority, consistency, likability, and social proof. Number four, the psychology of color. Colors create an emotional response, i.e. red is anger and passion, etc. So be mindful of what colors you choose. For a call to action, you can usually use the bob, big orange button, as long as it stands out with 
what's on the page is complimentary. If you've got a lighter color, blue, green, it'll pop. Um, so a lot of times a good rule of thumb is complementary color, the opposite color. That really helps your call to action stick out. But again, be mindful and it's worth learning about the psychology of color as an advertiser or marketer. Number five, put your biggest benefit in your headline. The famous marketer Jay Abrams says you can get up to 21 times the result of your marketing and ads just by better headlines because they are usually the most important part of your ad. Again, this goes to the attention part of AIDA. So don't overlook your headlines. Some people say you spend as much time on your headline as you do your entire marketing email or ad or whatever it is. Super important. All right, I know this was a ton of information, but because it's so valuable, I would highly encourage you to do one of the following two things right now. Yes, this is your call to action. Again, take that action now or you most likely will never do it. Okay, number one, buy this book and read it at least once because it's worth it. Put the description in below, below for you to find it on Amazon or Audible. That way you have absolutely no excuse not to buy it now. And also, if you do buy this book using my link, I get a small affiliate cut from Amazon. As a marketer, you probably already know about this, but it doesn't cost you anything more to use my link. And it would help me stick it to the man. That is, you know, get a few pennies from Amazon. But hey, every little bit counts, so I appreciate you doing that. If, you, if I haven't convinced you to get the amazing book with this video, then number two, at least do yourself a favor and take a second to click on the last link in the description below to go to a page on my website, which has all the information right now for you in blog format, so you can easily review it as you need, as you're creating your marketing ads. I highly recommend you bookmark the page so you can quickly and easily review the LFA and the nine secondary human desires as needed. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I thank you very much for watching it. This was my first YouTube video, so please feel free to leave any feed blah, blah, blah. This was my first YouTube video, so please feel free to leave any feedback, good or bad, to help me improve. Or if you have great ideas for future marketing videos like this one, please let me know. Thanks again. Really appreciate you watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day or night.